And then I looked up at the old mansion all made with inlaid marble and stately pillars. The last lovely thing left on the street to tell you what we once were. And while we were about tearing it down, I thought I heard somebody scream. A woman who's a lady and wouldn't make a sound over an ordinary agony. Yes, I... I thought I heard somebody scream. <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Scream. Hey, what's holding you guys up over there? Get that scaffolding in place. We start the wrecking ball in five minutes, so watch it. And you... What are you just standing around for? Me? I don't see anybody behind you. You, McDougal? It's Dunahy, Mr. Madison. Mickey Dunahy. Okay, Ash. Says here you're on the crane. They, uh, they got me on the list for the crane? Yeah, my man's out. We're behind schedule, so get up in that cab seat and wait for my signal. Uh, Mr. Madison, I, uh... You can call me Mal. Now, what's the problem? Mr. Madison, it's, uh... It's a feeling I've got that I shouldn't be the one to operate the crane on this job. Why not? Says here you're qualified. That's right, I am, sir, but... uh... Okay, the east wall's got to come down today. You were hired to operate the big ball. So what's with this feeling you're wasting my time with? You sick? No, I, uh... You look pretty healthy to me. It's not that, sir. It's, uh... I didn't know when I signed on the job it would be a house like this, sir. A lovely old house with such an air about it. After I reported in this morning, I started looking at it, and I said to myself... If I'm the one who has to be breaking those fine, graceful walls into bits, I said to myself, I can't. It would be like doing in a beautiful woman some way. My, my, aren't we sensitive, though? A bleeding Irish poet we've got on the payroll. Get lost. Oh, I'm uh, fired? You were hired to run that crane. There's no time to get a replacement, so get you over there and a man it with you. And when I say swing it, swing it. Yes, sir. And you can stop looking like that and get on that crane. Yes, sir, I'm going up. Good you? you rather I took it for you, Mickey? Whip wouldn't like it. No, it's okay, Joe. Okay, all right. Ow! Ah! Uh, what was that? What was what? Didn't you hear it? Somebody screamed. Huh? No, I didn't hear nothing. Hey, up there! What are you waiting for? Keep it swinging! Yes, sir. Ah! Uh, you've got to have heard it that time. It came from up in the wall somewhere. You, you did hear it, didn't you? Say, you got the shakes, kid. Here, here, wait a minute. I, I always carry a half no, a pint. No, 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 thanks. Now, come on, come on. Here are the dogs. I'm not hung over, and I I don't think I'm crazy. I I heard that scream twice. Uh-oh, here comes a whip. Okay, watch this. Uh, slow down. I can report it to the union. I probably will. Now, what's holding up the parade here? Well, he heard some kind of scream coming from up there. Twice it was I heard it. You mean it was horrible. Coming from the house. There's nobody in that house. Well, maybe somebody better check. Well, there's a watchman on duty. He hasn't reported anybody. Now cut the comedy and get going here. Look, I know you don't believe me, but I... I... If there's somebody up there, they scream again, I'll hear it because I'm staying right here with you. Now let her rip. We're behind schedule. Okay, hear anything that time? How did you know I heard it when the ball hit the house? Isn't that what you said? It's what happened, but I didn't say it. Well, so what? Point is, I didn't hear anything, neither did you. So get with it. Demolition plan says we level the east wall by quitting time today. And then I... I looked up at that mansion all made with inlaid marble and stately with pillars. The last lovely thing left on the street to tell you what we once were. Because all of the other great blocks of stone rise up like whited sepulchres with staring glass eyes. And and we don't know what we are. We don't know what we are. Oh, it's all right, kid. Now get it off your chest. Come on, let's have a drink. Oh, it's not the drink. It's hearing in my head how that scream was. I, I thought it must be a woman in terror. 
A woman who's a lady and wouldn't make a sound over an ordinary agony. Well, well, if it isn't the ghost of Brendan Bean still yakking about the screaming banshees. Uh, Mr. Mallison. Well, I guess it's as good an excuse as any for getting in the bag. I wasn't thinking it was any banshee, Mr. Mallison. Oh, then maybe it was a leprechaun, Irish. I said it sounded like a lady. Johnny, give me a rye and water. Mr. Mallison, I... I waited at the mansion before I came here tonight. I... I went over close by the wall and I listened. But I haven't told anyone, I swear to you. In the dark, I heard someone weeping. Oh, let up. Well, your joke's over. I don't play jokes. Well, somebody is, or else you're due for the head shrink. And come to think of it, why didn't Joe hear something this morning? Well, well you know, I, I might have, Mr. Mallison, but uh, I, I'm deaf in this ear and there was a, a lot of other noises, so, so I might have, but I can't be sure. Okay, I'll drink to that. Stick by your pal. But you stop bugging me, Irish. I don't want to hear any more about people screaming, crying, or talking to themselves. I got other things on my mind. Is it that you don't care for your line of work, Mr. Mallison? I'll tell you what I don't go for. The do-gooders. All these bleeding hearts that go around whooping and hollering every time some old barn gets torn down saying it's a landmark or history or it was their birthplace so it's holy. Well, when they tore down the block where I was born and all the rats ran out, nobody wrote any letters in the newspaper. Maybe the people who didn't have any place to go didn't know who to write to. Oh, go home and sleep it off. And I want to see you on that crane at seven sharp tomorrow morning. But tonight, don't you think someone ought to go through the mansion and find out what caused what I heard? Why? There's a watchman on duty 24 hours a day. There wasn't any watchman when I left there tonight. No? You sure? Yes, I am. Hmm. Uh. All right. All right, I'll borrow a flashlight, go over there right now and have a look. Does that satisfy you? You want to come with me? No, no, I I wouldn't want to bug you, Mr. Mallison. What you don't want is to lose your excuse to cry into your beer. Okay, poet, I don't need you. Anyway, not till seven tomorrow morning. Good night, sir. If they'd let us use dynamite, I wouldn't need the likes of you. Where are you? Hey, in there. Hey, inside. Wake up. Wake up or I'll have your job. Let me in here. Where are you? Okay, that does it. I'll break my way in. Anybody in here? Speak up. No trespassing. House is condemned. Wake up now, and I'll let you go. Okay, have it your way, but I'm coming through room by room till I find you, so watch out. Who's that? It's late for callers, but come in. I heard something. Where are you? I heard you. If you had listened, you might have heard me before. Huh? But you never listen, do you? Who is it? Direct your flashlight to the corner of the hall, please. No, no. The other corner. Hey! Uh-oh. All right, Sam, whatever your name is. Nap time's over. Did you hear me outside? Hey, get up. You're fired. I rather think your watchman no longer cares whether he's fired or not. He's dead. <laughs> It's no good shaking him any more. No use at all. Better to say a prayer for the soul of a weary old man who died in his sleep without knowing where his life led. Look here. I won't have any more of this. Whoever you are, come out here so I can see you. Walk to the door of the main parlor. It's straight ahead. I'm playing no fun and games with you, lady. Show yourself or you'll be in more trouble than you think. I could not be in more trouble than I now am. Wait a minute. You're that old dame with the baby carriage, aren't you? The one that wanders around the neighborhood picking up junk? Yeah, I hear they hauled you in once for looting. Well, this time you've had it, honey. So the watchman caught you trespassing here, and then you... Walk to the door of the main parlor. Why? 
I want to show you something. Look, all I have to do is call a cop, and in five minutes I'll have a whole squad tailing you through this place. And when they find out there's a dead watchman... You'll be the one who was in here alone with his body. You were terribly upset to discover he'd been sleeping on the job, remember? And you threatened him. Well, there were no marks on his body, none I could see anyway. Then why are you suggesting I was responsible for his death? The last time, woman. Where are you? As I say, he died of natural causes in his sleep. The innocent sleep accompanied by innocent snores of night watchmen the world over. Come along. And come along. This way. Open the parlor door. Look inside. Flash your light around. Right in the corner where you are. Well? Such a graceful room, isn't it? So perfectly proportioned. We weren't trying to box people into little egg crates in the days when this was built. A man could breathe. A woman could bloom. There was beauty to be lived with. I'm not here for the 50-cent tour. And we didn't destroy that beauty for the sake of greed. Will you cut this out? Where are you? You must excuse me. I am old, but still rather vain. It pains me to be seen as I am now. Okay, lady, I'm going out and call the cops. They won't find me here when they come. They'll say you're crazy, Mr. Mallison. How do you know my name? We should all be able to name our executioners. It helps to ensure a proper retribution. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Listen here. If you get out of this building right now, just get out and go someplace else. We'll forget the whole thing. Forget the whole thing. Of course, you would like to forget. It would be very convenient. But if I do not just get out... I can have you arrested. And be done with me. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Mal. You wish the workman would call you Mal, don't you? Then you'd be one of the boys, one of those with no responsibility for what you're doing. You could then be destructive, destroy, destroy like a child with no guilt. Tear down the walls. Let the great iron ball smash into the masonry and kill a beautiful thing without fear that the shadow lies on your shoulders. But you are a leader, Mal. You cannot shrug the shadow away. How do you make out knowing so much about me? I'm right, am I not? Now walk straight ahead until you come to the staircase. Only a shell now, but curved so delicately that the young lady of the house seemed to float as she appeared at the top from her tower bedroom. And in the tower itself is a window that someone your crew has forgotten to dismantle. What do I care? I don't want to hear about it. A window of hand-leaded glass of many colors. I will give it to you as a souvenir. In the first place, it's not yours to give. Ah, but it is. Listen to me. You can save yourself. You made save myself. Tomorrow, when your iron ball hits the tower, the glass will shatter into a thousand bits of color, like a kaleidoscope of all the scenes that were once lived in this house and will now be forgotten forever. If you remove the window now, the house will not wholly die. Don't you see? You will not be entirely a murderer. Will you shut up? You might... You just might save some little piece of yourself if you showed you cared. Why am I listening to a crazy witch? If you don't take the window, I will break it myself. Stop it. I'll be glad when this crazy place is down. Very well. From this moment, I will bear my agony in silence. Now, what are you talking... Hey, you there? I said, are you still there? Hey, what happened to you? 
How am I going to get out of here? Oh, turn around. You've got to get me out of here. You can't do this. Look, look, lady. Lady, I, I, I press no charges. It's, it's all okay. Just, just let me know you're real. Tell me. I really heard you talk and that, that it wasn't in my mind. The light from the street. All I have to do is go back this way. The street. The blessed street. What's the matter with you, bud? Nothing. Nothing at all. Make it Ryan Water. Sure. You look beat, friend. It's all right. Uh, just uh, give me the drink. Thanks. Thanks. Your pal's all left. Yeah? To try to put the Irish kid to bed. He ain't used to drinking, and he really tied one on tonight. Ah, too chicken to quit his job, so he tries every trick he can think of to, to get me to fire him. I don't get it. Why? You heard him tonight. He got some idea that old house we reckon is alive. So he doesn't want to hurt it. <laughs> Do you hear anything so, so crazy? <laughs> it's not. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. It sure sounds like it, all right. Well, kid, how you feeling this morning? Oh, fine, fine. No, where's the whip? Hmm. I want to hear how he made out last night. That's what I want to do. Hey, you're still a little drunk, ain't you? Mm, maybe so, maybe not. Maybe not enough. Got your half pint on you? Yeah, here. But don't let anybody see you. Yeah. Listen, I heard on the radio they found a body here, dead. The watchman, they said. You don't say. Hmm? Now, that's very interesting. All right, you guys. Coffee breaks over. Irish, don't you want to know what I found here last night? The watchman? Dead? Correct. And that's all I found, and I don't want to hear any more poetry from you about how you hate to destroy beautiful buildings because you're doing it, and you're taking pay for it, and so shut up. Yes, Mr. Mallison. If you're going to man the boom by yourself today, I need Joe somewhere else. We're going to make up for lost time. So get going. Yes, Mr. Mallison. Hey. Hey, boss. Yeah, Joe? There's something wrong up there. Look, in the tower. Where? That window. I, I thought I saw it open. Look. In the last window. She's breaking it. She's breaking it? But, but, but that means she she was real last night. Wait! Wait up there! Don't break any more of it! Wait! I've got to see you! What's he nuts all of a sudden? Oh, hey, Mickey! Mickey, stop the boom! Hold it! Mickey, can't you hear me? What's the matter with you? I'm fine, Joe. Gotta make up for lost time. Mickey, cut the motor. Don't swing the ball yet. I'm okay now, Joe. Somebody's gotta do the job. Might as well be me. Can't you hear me? Cut the motor. Mel's up in the tower. Watch how I can aim her. Joe, right at the pretty stained glass window. Now, swing! Hey, did you hear that, Joe? Don't anybody tell me I didn't hear a scream that time. Presented The Scream, written by Virginia Radcliffe and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Roger DeCoven, Peter Fernandez, Harry Belliver, Albert Ottenheimer, and Abby Lewis. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. 
Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs>